Alright, so picking up where we left off, we're going into animation. Now, what I had to do is, uh, the reason why we put on that cost attribute, uh, let's see, do I have cost on point? So I'm going to color... Two, one, oh. And so as you can see, I have that gradient. And that gradient is really important because what it allows me to do is order the primitives. Now, I did some sorting. I don't know if I still need these, but I'm keeping them. But I ended up doing this. This is a vertex sort. So what I go, so I go through every primitive here. I think I can put that color, it doesn't matter. I go through every primitive here. She us do red and green because it looks like something disappears there. Oh, it still does. Red and blue. There we go. So uh, we have that gradient. That allows me to go through every primitive and then get the cost uh, at the first the first prim vertex and the cost at the last prim vertex which is here and then I destroy the prim I remove it and then I build a new one and then I set the primitive attribute uh, basically to generation and uh, yeah I'm surprised that's actually working I'm, I'm just gonna move this up here I'm really surprised. I removed the primitive attribute, but I guess it still stays, which is cool. Let's see if that didn't break it. So I set the, I have to inherit the, I got to keep the generation attribute. That's very important. Destroy it, and then I make a new primitive. And depending on the cost, this is how I add those points back in. I add these vertices, I create these vertices, and I add them back in. So I know that the highest cost point is going to be the last vertice on the primitive. That's very, very important. Oh, wait, never mind. It did break, yes, because I'm setting the new primitive and surprisingly that carries through. That honestly blows my mind. I Yeah, okay, so that works. Alright, cool. Now what I noticed before is let's let me see if I can unhook the let me see what we get with just this. What we're gonna see is we don't have a uh, start triangle, and the reason why that is is because we have to build its own primitive. Because remember, every triangle talks to one primitive and on the last uh, prim, uh, its last prim vertice. So what that means is the start, when we start right here, and let me, oh, let me uh, animate it. Uh, let me bypass. Let me animate it here. Okay, so there it starts, right? Well, this triangle that belongs here, well, let me put it on a uh, template. That triangle, he doesn't have, there's, it's looking for the last prim vertex. And so what, we, what I do is I just uh, find that, get the start point from the network, destroy everything that's not a start point, and then destroy the geometry. And then I fuse them all together. Or do I connect? No, I don't. I don't connect. And then so I just move it down, merge them, then I add them together. This is a point ID, and so I connect them together. And so what that ha means now is the start uh, triangle now has a primitive to talk to. And so we just merge that in. I increment the generation because this is like generation uh, zero, and this is one, and I want them all to start at one. And so, you know, I can't, if I... Uh, did this here, as you can see, it, that's definitely not working. So uh, increment the generation, they're all in order. And so here is the path growth. 
And so what we have to do is we got to set up this blend. This is the interpolation in between them. So what this does is so we want to get the frame. Then we want to subtract what generation we're on. So as you can see, this is the first generation. And so we're going to uh, subtract that generation. We're going to multiply it by the rate. And so that's how fast each one of these lines are going to grow. Then we subtract the start frame and we maximize that. So zero is going to be the maximum. So that means that we can offset this to a start frame of 20, you know, and all these will grow uh, depending on their generation. So they're all basically, all these primitives, they get clamped. They get, so if you're below a certain number, it gets clamped to zero. And then basically it gets normalized. And so we divide that number by the rate and this min basically max. So we're not going to go over one. So we get a value of zero to one. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to, for every, uh, for every primitive, we want to grab the vertex, um, the top vertex, and we want to get that point, then we want to get that position. So basically in here, so if this is one primitive, that's the top vertex. So that's one. So we grab that position and we grab that position. So we're just grabbing both positions. And then we just interpolate between them. We blend them. And that's why the ordering was super important right here, this vertex sort. Because before I noticed, it was, it was sort of scrambled a little bit and I couldn't figure it out. So because we grab the, the last vertex and the first vertex right there on the primitive. That's that's basically the whole system right there. So we interpolate between that and we set it as a blend attribute and um, then we set the position of the um, of PT0. So the last one, that's the one we're moving, the last vertex, we're taking it from this point to its original one. And that's the blend. And if it's set to zero, I just remove it just to visualize and keep it clean. Um, if I don't do that, we'll just see like a bunch of points and you know, they just they don't start growing until the uh, certain time All right, so the next thing I got to do is uh, for easier communication I need between the triangles and the points what I do is again. It's all being driven by that top by that by the top uh, prim vertex the largest prim vertex so basically, um, I'm promoting that attribute, but I'm grabbing it from the top vertex from a certain vertex point. So I'll get the vertex index of the, you know, the largest primvert, which is this one on the primitive. Then I get that point, and then I have access to the attributes which I've carried through the uh, primitive ID, which is the triangle it's talking to, and we're putting it on the primitive. And then we're the, uh, the opposite vertex that we determined up in the communication network. We carried that all the way down here. So a little bit of housekeeping. And then we go on to the animated um, vertices. Now, as you can see, what we're doing is because uh, every triangle is going to talk to that point pretty much. And it's going to grab the blend attribute and the opposite vertex attribute and it's going to drive the interpolation of the opposite vertex attribute. So I'm just going to actually zoom in here so we can take a uh, use case. And that opposite vertex basically matches the blend. And so we blend those primitives together and then that drives that drives the triangle. So basically we have to find by primitive ID uh, on the primitive and so that allows us you know from the pr promotion that we did right here this guy that allows us to easily grab the opposite vertex and the blend attributes and then we simply on the triangle on each primitive we grab what is what we labeled as the opposite vertex grab its point grab its position and then we just need its neighbor it doesn't matter which one um, so we can just put it through here, put the opvert through here, plus one mod two. 
So it's going to loop around 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And so then we get the vertex index and that point and the point position. And again, we just blend them uh, with a lerp. And then we set that point attribute of the op vert point like that. And that animates our points. And so the OTL has been uh, made available on my Dropbox. And so I hope you guys uh, have fun with this. I plan on expanding this into um, N-GONs which is going to be an interesting challenge. And I plan on expanding it so, you know, this, instead of, like, growing out, it's going to rotate, it's going to flip. And um, so we'll have these unfolding, like, these unfolding triangles. I think that's going to be pretty cool. I'm looking forward to next weekend where I can do that. Um, all right, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, my vo voice is pretty s sore, so... Uh, have a good one, guys. Thanks.